Fasting can be kind of a finicky thing, right? There's like lots of little teeny things that can like knock us out of a fasted state. And then there's things that can totally be fine. So I wanna help you understand what things are going to kick you out of a fast when it comes down to flavored drinking waters. So like those things that you add to water just to give them a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. Well, there's a lot more to it than just a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of flavor. So here's how I'm gonna lay out this video. I'm gonna talk about the big picture first. I'm gonna talk about the common ingredients that we'll find in these and why they are good, bad, or ugly. And then after that, I'll go through each individual brand. Okay, these are the most common ones that are laid out in front of me, the most common ones you'll find in the grocery store and online. And I'll go through which ones I would say are approved, not approved, or kind of in a gray area. Hey, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button right there, okay? And then go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications. That way you know whenever I post a new video or whenever I go live. So please, please, please do that. All right, without further ado, let's get into this stuff because this is interesting science here. So first off, I wanna talk about sucralose. That's Splenda, okay? You're gonna find that as a common ingredient in a lot of these drinks. Now, what we have to know about sucralose, technically, sucralose doesn't break a fast. That's what's kind of cool about it. Is it healthy stuff? Maybe not the best, okay? There have been some links with gut health and everything like that. We're not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but the fact is, technically, it has never been shown to kick you out of a fast or cause an insulin spike. However, any time that sucralose is used in a powder form, it's usually bound to maltodextrin. I'm gonna talk about maltodextrin in a second, but it clearly breaks a fast. The next thing we have to look at is something known as acesulfame potassium. Now, when you see it on a label, you're gonna see acesulfame K. Okay, now, acesulfame potassium has been shown to cause pretty serious insulin spikes, meaning it kicks you out of a fast, in rats. Now, that's in rats, so it's not apples to apples, but it's a, such a clear response it has me nervous. It triggers what is called a cephalic insulin response, which is basically where something sweet hits your tongue and it causes a reaction with your beta cells in your pancreas to produce insulin. Not all sweeteners do it, but acesulfame potassium has been shown to in rats. But then there was another study that was published with humans in the Journal of Insights of Nutrition and Metabolism that did find that just simply swishing around or tasting a little bit of acesulfame potassium elicited a pretty significant insulin response. Honestly, it's two for two there, or kind of one and a half for two. So Acesulfame potassium, out of the picture, right? Okay, the next up is aspartame. Here's the thing, aspartame is like the one that is notorious for being poison, right? It's bad, it's not good stuff. The reality is though, aspartame doesn't technically break a fast metabolically. It doesn't elicit an insulin response. That's why I usually say that although I don't condone them, diet sodas are technically okay. I just don't think you should be drinking them all the time. Here's the problem. Aspartame contains phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is essentially a neurotoxin. So it's negating the positive effects that you're gaining mentally from a fast. Additionally, we've got aspartic acid, and aspartic acid has been proven and shown in multiple studies to kill neurons. So you're fasting, you're getting all this mental benefit, increases in brain-derived neurotropic factor, and then you're completely counteracting them by having aspartame. So sure, does it metabolically break a fast? No. Should you have it? In my opinion, no. Then we have maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is a sugar, and they use it as a binding agent. So if we have like a packet of Splenda or something that has powder in it, it's gonna be bound to maltodextrin. And maltodextrin is higher glycemic than sugar. It's high, the highest glycemic you can find. It's on average 106 to 136 on a scale of zero to 100. So it's beyond as glycemic as we can go. Okay, bad stuff, definitely spikes your insulin, definitely breaks a fast. Then lastly, we have to look at vitamin C that's gonna be in some of these ingredients. Now, vitamin C sounds like a good thing, but when you're in a fasted state in the form of like absorbic acid, it actually breaks a fast. There's a study published in Rejuvenation Research that found that when you took antioxidants like vitamin C or vitamin E during a fast, it negated the effects of a fast simply because it was protecting the body. An antioxidant protects the body. During a fast, you wanna elicit a little bit of stress. So interesting stuff. All right, so now without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into each of these, okay? I'm gonna spend just a little bit of time on each. First off, these are the most common ones that you'll find online, crystal light powder and crystal light liquid. Start with the liquid. Okay, so this one has aspartame in it. So technically, technically it would be okay on a fast, right? Crazy. However, the powder form has that good old fashioned maltodextrin in it, spiking your insulin. So unfortunately, this one's a clear no-go, okay? We cannot have this one. Then we have Crystal Light Liquid, okay? They got on the bandwagon. They saw that everyone was making these liquid drinks like Mio and everything like that. And they're like, well, let's create one. So this is great stuff, except for the fact that it has sucralose, which isn't the greatest thing, but it technically would be fasting friendly, but they had to go on and add acesulfame potassium in it. 
They had to do that. If it was sucralose, probably could have lived with it. But nope, they added that acesulfame potassium, which is definitely a fast breaker. So that one's gone, okay? Uh, then we've got stir. Okay, stir is interesting stuff. The cool thing I like about stir is they're using stevia. So kudos to them. Now, why they didn't just leave it with stevia, I don't know. Because this stuff tastes pretty darn good, to be completely honest. But they added white grape juice concentrate into it. They added a concentrated grape juice. I mean, pure, like, definitely a fast breaker. That's talking about juice, so it definitely broke a fast. Now, additionally, they added absorbic acid into it. They added vitamin C. So we've got white grape juice and we've got vitamin C. Why would you do that when there's already stevia in it? That would have been perfect. Okay, so unfortunately, that one's a clear breaker. Okay, this next one, we've got Splenda Zero. Now, this stuff is interesting. I have to hand it to Splenda on this one because they did make this one pretty clean. Again, it's Splenda, so it's not the healthiest thing in the world, but at least with this stuff, it's sucralose, no maltodextrin because it's in a liquid form, and they actually didn't add acesulfame to it. They actually left it straight up sucralose. So, you know, reluctantly, I would say that this one's technically okay. Okay, just not the healthiest option. Uh, then we have Lakanto. Okay, so Lakanto has done a good job, in my opinion, simply because literally three ingredients. We've got monk fruit, which is very powerful inside the body anyway. We've got water, and we've got natural flavor. So Lakanto definitely nailed it with this one. So this is the one that I generally use. I usually use this, or I'll create my own. Like I'll make it with just a little bit of monk fruit extract and some apple cider vinegar or something. But this stuff is definitely a winner. Um, and because of that, Quite frankly, I've gone ahead and I've put them down in the description below. There's a special link that you can get that at a special discount, and it's really cheap, guys. Like, it's super affordable. So go ahead and check it out after this video. That's a good one that I think is perfect. Add that to water. They've got lemon flavor. They've got some other flavors. So good on them. I appreciate them doing that. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one, too. Now we've got Mio. Okay, so Mio's super popular. Probably the most popular flavored water that you're going to find out there, or flavored drink mix, right? The issue with Mio, okay, they use sucralose, which is not the best thing, but then what they do is they add something called sucrose acetate isobutyrate. Okay, it's an emulsifier, and they do that to make it mix a little bit better, but this sucrose acetate isobutyrate, the operative word there is sucrose. Sucrose is sugar, okay? This sucrose isobutyrate blend is literally derived from sugar, so you're going to have an insulin response with this. Okay, it's unfortunate because they've done a good job. They've made ones with electrolytes, they've made one with uh, caffeine and all this stuff. But unfortunately, that isobutyrate, that does just completely like throw things off. Leads me to Market Pantry. Okay, so Market Pantry is basically the Target brand. Same kind of thing. They tried to copy Mio. So we got the same ingredient profile as Mio. We've got sucralose, and then we've got the sucrose isobutyrate, which we don't want in there again. Okay, so same classification as Mio. It's basically a knockoff. Uh, two other ones that I want to list that I didn't even have locally, but are still common. We've got the noon hydration tabs. Okay, those are little effervescent tabs that uh, are like electrolytes and everything like that. So they're pretty popular. Now the hard part with noon is they have dextrose in them. Dextrose is like maltodextrin. It's not quite as high glycemic, but it's still, it's, it's carbohydrate. You can't have that. It's anti-caking and it's to solidify it into a, like a more of a solid. If it was in a liquid form, it would probably be okay. But those tablets, that will definitely break a fast. The other one is the Jelly Belly brand. Now, Jelly Belly, come on. Okay, we would think that that would be like pure sugar because we think Jelly Bellies are like jelly beans, right? Well, Jelly Belly actually did a pretty darn good job. I got to give it to them. The only downside is they added grape juice concentrate once again. So they did a lot like Stir did. I'm like, oh, come on, Jelly Belly. Like, you guys have done a good job. So when it comes down to it, there's not a whole lot that you can use. Okay, we've got the Splenda Zero version, which in my opinion still has sucralose in it, not the best, but it's not gonna break a fast. And we have Lakanto. I mean, out of all of them, those are the two that I think are technically fasting friendly. Now, Lakanto is actually cool people and have actually worked with me and allowed me to give a discount to everybody. So honestly, that just takes an economic win in my book. So if you guys are trying to get your hands on a flavored drink that's gonna work for you during a fast, then heck, I would go with the Lakanto because you're gonna get it cheaper and quite frankly, they're cool people and they support this channel, so why the heck not? So there you have it. It's kind of dwindled down to just a couple. At the end of the day, you have to do what's right for you. And you have to make the decisions that are gonna allow you to live for a long time. So don't be putting a bunch of poison in your body all the time. Make decisions that are gonna help you not only get the most out of your fast metabolically, but live for a long time too. And big thanks to Lakanto for actually allowing me to feature them in this video after I told them that they had amazing stuff. See you guys in the next video.